Na, Fury, wie wär's mit einem kleinen Ausritt? Hast du Lust? Privileged boys, Packy. That's what I said. Well, hi, Mr. Adam. How do you like the sign? Looks great. How can I get this camp ready without you boys? When's the first group of boys coming out, Mr. Adams? Beginning of next month. Anything else we can do for you? Well, come on inside and we'll see what we can figure out. Have a seat, Joey. Oh, let's see. Now, you finished painting the sign. I guess that fence near the barn gets down a little paint. What's your problem, Fury? Someone must be coming. Hey, looks like Mr. Norton, the new owner. New owner? Yeah, he bought the place a couple weeks ago. Thought you knew. Looks like he wants to talk to us. You Adams, the camp director? That's right, sir. Well, I'm Charles P. Norton, new owner of this place. Pleased to meet you. As you can see, we're getting Eagle's Nest ready for the boys. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Adams, but I'm closing the camp. What do you mean? I mean, I'm terminating your lease. But you can't do that. Plans are underway for the summer. I've hired counselors. Well, you better reach contract. It says if the ranch is ever sold, a new lease has to be signed. I'll sign a new lease, I... No. Now, I need this area for my brood mares. Uh, you'll have to find another camp for your boys. But, Mr. Norton, it's too late in the season to find anything now. Yeah, summer's nearly here. I'm sorry. I can't believe this. He's sure mean. Gosh, I'm sorry, Mr. Adams. Maybe you can use part of the Broken Wheel for your camp. The broken Wheel has no camping facilities, Joey. Well, I'm going to talk to Jim anyway. Maybe he can think of something. Come on, Packy. I wish we could have the boys here, but how? We haven't got the buildings or equipment? I guess you're right, Jim. It's a doggone shame, that's what. I'd like to fix that old Mr. Norton. Well, he bought the ranch, Packy. He can do exactly what he wants with it. Come on, let's get some lunch. Yeah. What's going on around here? Uh-oh. I got a feeling a certain Anna's come back. Don't tell me Aunt Harriet's here. I certainly am. And high time, too, judging by the condition of this house. Aunt Harriet, gee, I'm glad oh, you're oh, here. Oh, put me down, put me down, put me down. Oh, <laughs> gee, it certainly is great to see you. Isn't it, boys? Yeah, it certainly is great, Miss Harriet. I'll say. I sure haven't forgotten how you saved Fury's coat. Well, be seeing it, Joey. Wait a minute, Packy. Where are you going? Just home for lunch. Now, don't leave on my account. I've already fixed a nice, nourishing lunch for everybody. Oh, boy. Let's eat. After we wash our hands, Joey. Yes, Aunt Harriet. Come on, Packy. <laughs> All of us. Hmm? Oh, of course, Aunt Harriet. <laughs> Kids have been coming there every summer. They're gonna feel terrible. Well, what reason did he give for closing it? Oh, he's gonna use the buildings for his brood mares. Brood mares? Does he raise horses too? Mm, he breeds trotters. Sells them all over the world. Trotters? What's his name? Norton. Charles P. Norton. Norton? Wonder where he's from. As a matter of fact, he's from Indiana, same as you, Aunt Harriet. Aha, the trotting family. Norton, Indiana. Well, it must be the same one. You know him, Aunt Harriet? Know him? I went to school with the old skin flint. Pete, get out the station wagon. What for, Miss Harriet? I want to have a talk with Stinky Norton. 
Oh, well, he's kind of hard to talk to, Aunt Harriet. Oh, nonsense. I told you I went to school with him. Begging your pardon, Miss Harriet, but he might have forgot that after such a long time. It wasn't that long ago, Pete. Are you going to talk to him about the camp, Aunt Harriet? Yeah, maybe get him to open it again? There's no maybe about it. Come on now, let's get a move on. Good form, Mr. Norton. Both you and General Meade. Think he can win in handicap? Uh, he'll win hands down if I know anything about trotting horses. Now, who in Tarnation is coming to pester us now? Hiya, Stinky. Long time no see. Well, Harriet Newton, where'd you come from? What do you want? Well, I came to see why you closed up the kids' summer camp. Why can't folks mind their own business? Underprivileged kids are everybody's business, Stinky. Now listen, I'm keeping my brood mares down there, and that's that. Can't you put your brood mares someplace else, Mr. Norton? Yeah, you got thousands of acres. No, they can't be put someplace else. Furthermore, kids should be seen and not heard. Why can't you put your brood mares someplace else? Because a passel of kids yelling around here upsets them. It upsets me, too. I got more important things on my mind. Such as? You see that horse? <laughs> what about him? That's my fastest trotter. That's General Meade. I'm grooming him for the county fair handicap. And I got no time for a lot of folder all about summer camps and underprivileged kids. Do you mean you're going to run this old plug in the handicap? What do you mean, that old plug? That's the fastest trotter in the West. Is that right, Buck? Yes, sir. Well, my horse lightning back in Indiana could make this old general, uh, what's his name, look like a buck private. Uh oh, that pity is a summer camp. Harriet, you always could brag better than anybody I ever knew. If you had your horse here right now, I'd make you eat your words. I'll bring him here. And what's more, I'll make a little side deal with you, if you've got gumption enough to take it. What kind of bet? I'll raise Lightning against General Meade in the handicap, and if Lightning wins, you'll rent the camp back to the kids. Take the lady's bet, boss. You got nothing to worry about. I'll do better than that. If your horse Lightning wins the handicap, I'll donate the camp back to the boys. You heard him. You're all witnesses. Come on, boys, we'll get back to the house. I'll send for Lightning, and we'll go right into training. Bye, Mr. Norton. Bye, Buck. That woman's come up and has been overdue for a long time. I'm gonna see that she gets it. You sure she can't win? Mr. Norton, there isn't a trotting horse in this country can beat General Meade. By the time I get through sharpening him up, that trophy's as good as yours, along with the $5,000 prize money. But you see that General Meade wins the handicap, you can keep that $5,000. Hey, thanks, Mr. Norton. <laughs> we'll win all right. You know something, Pete? That lightning's not half bad. And look at Fury. He seems to take kind of nature to that trot. Mm hmm. pretty good out there, Aunt Harriet. Say, Jim, I just got an idea. Yeah, what's that? If Joey could pace me around on Fury every day, it would get lightning in shape a lot quicker. Oh, I'd be glad to, Aunt Harriet. How about you, Fury? <laughs> hey, can I watch Aunt Harriet? Sure you can. How about it, Jim? Yeah, it's all right with me. And another thing. Could you and Pete lay out a practice track for me someplace on the range? No, we don't have to. Some level land up by the line shack. I'll go up and check it first thing in the morning to see that there ain't no chuck holes. Fine, Pete. Now, Joey, we've got to get into training. No fishing after school and no hunting until after the handicap. Okay by me, Aunt Harriet. How can we lose? We're not going to. <laughs>
I think Aunt Harriet's got that handicap sewed up. Oh. Miss Lightning is sure well mean, Miss Harriet. I told you he was. He's sure geared up. Pete's right, Jim. Could we put him in a stall by himself overnight? Sure, good idea. You got a clean stall in the barn. It's quiet in there. Good. All right, let's get started on back. All right, Lightning. Let's go. I don't believe it. I clocked him myself. I tell you, he's faster than the general. You told me nobody was faster than General Meade. That's why I took her bet. You told me I didn't have anything to worry about. Let me tell you something. If I lose this race and have to give up that piece of land, you better start looking for another job. We searched most of the range, Aunt Harriet. I don't think there's a chance of finding him before post time. Stinky Norton's at the bottom of this. I just know he is. Now I guess the camp will never open. Oh, I should have stayed with Lightning last night to make sure nothing would happen. It's all my fault. Oh, Aunt Harriet, you could know that Lightning be stolen. <laughs> Why can't I ever do anything right? Oh, don't cry, Aunt Harriet. Never made the bet in the first place. Got everybody's hopes up. Well, you did your best, Aunt Harriet. Tell you what, Miss Harriet. When we get back to the ranch, I'll make you some of that sassafras tea you like. That'll make you feel better. The only thing that'll make me feel better is to beat Stinky Norton in the handicap. Say, Aunt Harriet, why don't we race Fury? Well, he's pace lightning and, and he knows how to run the course. Hey, Joey's right. Maybe the boy's got something there, Jim. What did I think of that? Oh, wait a minute. You mean you'd race Fury hitched to a sulky? Why not? Well, pacing a horse and pulling a sulky aren't exactly the same thing. Well, we could try. Yeah, why give up when the times are tough? That's what I say. Well, what do you say, Fury? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that settles that. All right, then, let's go. We may not win, but Stinky will know he's had a good race. They're off, and it's Georgie Boy in front with Miguel and Avenger battling for second place. Then Pretty Lady, Green Gold, Meadowlark, Fairweather, and Jet Ace. It's still Georgie Boy Miguel fighting him for the lead. Green Gold dropping a length behind Meadowlark, edging out Avenger. Where in tarnation is that woman? Maybe she got cold feet, Buck. Who knows? About a minute till post time. Oh, here she comes now. Okay, Stinky. Get set for the race of your life. It's not lightning. That's fury. I know it's fury. Where did you take lightning, you crook? What do you mean, where did I take him? I never thought you'd turn out to be a horse thief, Charlie Norton. But just you wait. 
Now, what are you talking about, Harriet? As if you didn't know. What my aunt's trying to say, Mr. Norton, is... We're starting, boss. Better get out there. Let's go, Fury. We'll show that old crook. Now, I don't know what that poor woman's talking about, but she's going to eat crow. All right, General. You know, there's something about the way Buck is acting. You mean, kind of suspicious-like? Mm-hmm. Do you think he stole lightning? Well, let's report him to the sheriff. You can't convict anybody without proof, Packy. Yeah, that's right, Joey. Well, let's get to the track and watch the race. And look, boys, don't be too disappointed if Fury doesn't win. Of course he'll win. He has to. <laughs> Come on. Your attention, ladies and gentlemen, the horses are coming onto the track for the running of the sixth race, the Capital City Handicap. An announcement, ladies and gentlemen, a last-minute substitution. Lightning, Indiana import owned by Miss Harriet Newton, has been scratched out of the race. He has been replaced by Fury of the Broken Wheel Ranch. Repeat, lightning entry of Miss Harriet Newton has been replaced by Fury. Owner, Joey Newton. This is certainly an unexpected development. There's been much excitement around Lightning and General Meade with the feeling that the race would boil down to a two-horse race. I've just been told that Fury, Lightning's replacement, has never pulled a sulky before in his life. Looks like they're ready. The mobile starting gate is moving down the track. Fury has a good position. General Meade up there steady and straight. And they're on their way. They're on. General is out in front, Ding Dong, strong at his heels, shooting star third, then Saucy Lassie, Purple Streak, and Traveler. Turning into the back stretch for the first time, look at him go, the top horses in the country. The General living up to his reputation as he takes a length and a half lead. Hey, where's Fury? Ah, oh, that's him way back there. Come on, Fury. Traveler sneaks in for third place, shuts off, Jet Ace. Come on, Fury, we can't stay back here. Around the bend, oh, still boy. General Meade showing the on, General, let's go. as Ding Dong slips back. Get going, Fury! Get going! Those kids need that camp! It's General Meade, Ding Dong, Shooting Star, and uh, Traveler. And from last place, and flying... There's Fury's moving up! Fury, yeah, look horse at that horse! Oh, it's Come on, Fury! Far behind, going for the lead, and stepping through the inside, getting that lead. It's Fury. Show that run. General Meade your heels, Fury. The outside, and the other is dropping back. It's Fury on the rail in front, three quarters of a but they've still got a long way to go. Can he maintain that pace after that tremendous brush from behind? It's Fury on the inside. General Meade on the outside now sticks his nose. Oh, let me down now, General. Fury. Come on. Again on the inside, a tremendous race, the greatest horses in the country. General Meade on the outside, Fury on the rail. Oh, oh those wheels are treacherously close. Will there be a lockup? And they hit wheels, but uh, both sulkies are all right. And Keep your wheels away from me, you horse thief. Race. And all I get drop out. Fury on the rail. Come on, General. General Meade on the outside. Come on, Fury. General Meade on the rail. Come on. Something left for the final time around. Meanwhile, Fury. So long, stinky. By driver Come on. as Fury comes away. It's Fury trotting a storm in front now by a length and a half. General Meade, however, still under a pull, now being asked for speed. And uh, General Meade coming on. It's Fury in front, and General Meade coming on. Here comes General Meade making his closing burst of the race. He'll draw up even abreast, and in front of Fury, it's General Meade on the outside. Now Fury comes away once more, a tremendous horse. And to make that great run. Come on! Come on! Something left, apparently. And here they come, the final run down the stretch. It's Fury on the rail. Coming on again desperately. Will Fury hold it? Yes, Fury wins in a length and a half. Fury, the winner. Hey, you fellas go on over to Aunt Harriet, will you? I want to ask Buck a few questions. Come on, boys. Let's go over and watch Fury get his trophy. <laughs> Well, Fury, 
Jerry, how does it feel winning a trophy? Five thousand dollars at the same time. And a summer camp. He said it feels fine. How are you, Newton? You better explain something to me. And you better explain something to me. Where is lightning? Tarnation, woman, I didn't take your horse. Well, somebody did. I think maybe we've got the guilty party right here. Look. <laughs> Jerry's trying to tell us something. Huh? What can a horse tell you? Maybe he could tell us who stole lightning. Go on. You people aren't going to frame me. Tell us about lightning now. Oh, lightning's up in Box Canyon someplace. He's okay. In the old days, we used to hang horse thieves. Yeah. Too bad we can't do it now. Now Pete and I will just let the sheriff take charge of him. Come on, Buck. Harriet, I didn't have anything to do with this. I believe you, Stinky. You're really not a bad sort, even though you did try to close the summer camp. I just got one thing to say. I was licked, fair and square. But there's one thing I can't figure out. What's that? How in the world a horse that never pulled a sulky in his life can beat General Meade? The only one who can tell you that, Mr. Norton, is Fury. Yeah, and he ain't talking. Are you, Fury? Beautiful sight, Stinky. I still say it'd have been a good place for a brood mares. Mr. Norton, I want to thank you very much. No, uh, it's nothing. It's nothing. Oh, but it is. The boys are very happy about the gift. What gift? Did you know? Mr. Norton gave the camp a string of riding horses. <laughs> What's he saying now? He's saying that he thinks you're great. <laughs> 